it was the year LuisaJo.com had first crossed a million dollars in sales. But I've never talked before about what was happening behind the scenes. Let me share how I almost ruined my business, plus five tips of what I learned so that it doesn't happen to you. It all started because I was so amped about hitting that seven figure milestone, I got in my head. Part of that included thinking I just had to have this fancy big shot lawyer. So I taxi to his expensive downtown office, decked in a fancy sheath dress and power heels this high. And at the beginning of our meeting, he asks, what are you projecting to do next year? I sit up super straight in my chair, look him dead in the eyes and say, we're gonna be crossing 10 million next year. It feels really silly now because that next year, we ended up doing just a little over a million. And I get it. You might be thinking, cry me a river, Louisa. But in my head, it felt so real. I was certain that if I just did more of what had worked, we could 10X our results. Plus, I was finally doing what I was made to do, so this was my chance to prove it. Y'all don't think I can do it. Watch this here. But the reality was, I'd never done it before. I had no proof to back it up. Plus, these were all made up numbers with made up deadlines. So you can imagine my embarrassment when I had to tell that lawyer later, yeah, we kind of missed our goal. But aside from Louisa learning a ton of humility, there's hopefully a motivational takeaway for you. Maybe you've told your family before, I'm gonna make this amount by March of next year. Then that deadline rolls around and you've gotta eat crow. Or even worse, you might be tempted to think, I'm a failure and I should just give up. But this thinking can literally cost you your dreams. Just remember how many times it took James Dyson to create his famous vacuum cleaner. 5,117. Imagine failing at something that many times, but you just keep going. It took him five years, but he ended up a billionaire with his products in almost every household. Hopefully this helps inspire you to keep going. But I'm also not just saying to keep at it blindly. In fact, you should set deadlines. It's just gotta be for things that will help you get to your goal, but that you can control. Like, I'm gonna pitch my vacuum to a hundred retailers by this date. Because even though it might feel more exciting to set a sales deadline, like I'm gonna sell a thousand vacuums by next month, you're not in full control of that. That's why one of the best ways I found is to set goals that you are fully in control of so that you both stay motivated and keep growing. But that's not the only obstacle you'll have to overcome to meet your goals. I'm embarrassed to say this because I should know better by now. But at the beginning of this year, I announced to my YouTube consultants, let's aim to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. My thinking kind of made sense. We'd built a solid team. We'd established a really strong foundation over the last few years. I am really good at what I have to share. So it felt achievable. But as of this recording, it looks like we'll probably end the year at around 20,000 subscribers, which don't get me wrong, I am so grateful for. I do not take you being here for granted, but it's a lesson that took me a long time to learn because for most of my life, I attached deep meaning to the outcome of my goals. Maybe you felt that way about getting a sale or hitting a certain revenue goal. For me, it would have been, if I get 100,000 subscribers, that's proof I'm capable of great things. But when you attach that kind of meaning to a goal, you're also giving not hitting the goal meaning. For example, when I fail at something, my default is to think, my parents were right. I'm not capable of more. The crazy thing is, I think a lot of us are taught to give meaning to our goals. Like if I get a book deal and become a number one New York Times bestseller, then I can be proud of myself. But can you directly control the trends of the publishing industry? Can you convince a book publisher to fall in love with your idea? The truth is you can't guarantee success, but you can guarantee a good fight. High five to that because without those intense and often painful meanings behind not hitting those goals, think about how much more likely you are to not give up and thus actually 
achieve your dreams. But I know it is so much easier said than done. My own determination was put to the test big time during one of my biggest failures. Let me take you back to my first email only product launch. For context, this was shortly after I'd done a close to seven figure live launch. So I was feeling pretty optimistic. I launched the course, watched the emails go out and nothing. I'm not going to lie. I was stunned and I felt like something was wrong with me. But eventually I picked myself back up and asked, all right, what did I learn from this? That's when I realized my attitude had been completely wrong and honestly arrogant because during my live launches, people could sense me. They could feel that I actually cared. But when I removed the live challenges and live streams to rely only on sales pages and emails, it was a completely different environment, which is why we only made about $2,000 in sales. I had to realize I'm not entitled to success despite my big launches in the past. So I had to start from scratch. It was humbling, but I relearned how to write a sales page. I asked for feedback from anyone who would give it. Plus, I also got really analytical. What drives sales? What doesn't get any sales? What content drives the most engagement? It took a few years, but I got better. And the happy ending is I haven't done a live launch since 2019. But learn from my mistake. There's this idea that once you hit a certain level of success, things will be easier. In some ways it does. As your business grows, you'll have more resources and support so you don't have to do it all on your own. But the truth is, new failures will meet you at every phase of your journey. It's like that saying, new level, new devil. And in case it helps you to hear this, I still fail all the time. Honestly, things almost always go worse than I expect because I dream big, so I fail big too. But why does that have to be a bad thing? In fact, I truly believe that learning to walk hand in hand with disappointment and failure is the key to success. Because success isn't a one-time thing. It's something that's compounded over time as you learn from your failures. But that can be a hard pill to swallow when you look at others who seem to have it easier than you like a client of mine who went viral on TikTok. In less than a year, she had gone from zero to hundreds of thousands of subscribers. But then she started running into a problem. She didn't have other traffic sources. She also had a very simple website. Plus she had no experience with marketing, copywriting, or sales. So that virality had helped her make six figures in her first year, but she didn't know what to do next. To sustain her growth, she actually had to go backwards and learn all the skills she'd skipped over initially. You can find stories like this all over because there's never a shortcut for putting in the work of learning the skills and building a solid foundation that you can continue to grow upon. So don't worry if it looks like someone else is ahead of you and it's making you feel behind. You never know what's going on behind the scenes and if they have something that's even gonna last. Stay focused on building your skills because I don't know about you, but I'm okay taking a little longer to get to where I wanna go if it means I use that time wisely and build a rock solid foundation so I've never gotta go backwards. But even if you're focusing on putting in the work, there's something I see all the time that might still be holding you back. A lot of people come to me and say, I'm doing the things, like I've been posting on social media for a month, why isn't it working? I say this with love. But if it's happening to you too, the most common reason I see is because they're not doing it well. For example, they might be posting generic information, fluff, or personal updates, which tells your potential clients nothing about why they should hire you, like your methodology, your character, and your experience. But it's also one of those times where you don't know what you don't know. So it can feel mind boggling that you're putting in the work, but not getting the results. But there's actually a scientific reason why this happens. It's been explored in studies that have found that less experienced drivers actually overestimate their abilities. For example, a newly licensed teenage driver might take risks that a much more experienced driver would avoid. This phenomenon is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's where those with the least expertise assume that they'll be great at something. Because what happens is the more you know, 
the more you realize how much you actually don't know. That's why you see a lot of ego at the bottom and a lot of patience and humility at the top. So when you feel like you are doing everything right, but it's just not working for you, I wanna challenge you to dig deeper. It doesn't mean you suck. It just means there's more to learn. Even after almost a decade of growing my business, I still ask myself, what do I not know? And how can I continue to grow? And if you're really not sure, ask someone else. Sometimes it just takes getting a second pair of eyes to see what you're missing. Now, I would love to hear from you. Since this is all about learning and growing from those learnings, what is your biggest takeaway from this video? And how can you start using it today to grow more?